Hey y'all, welcome back to Nini's Texas Kitchen. Happy Easter everyone. Today at our house, we're gonna make some hummingbird cake for y'all. So this is my granny's recipe. She died back in 2007, but she gave me this recipe and it's awesome. So you need three cups of flour sifted. You need one teaspoon of soda. You need two cups of sugar. You need one teaspoon of cinnamon and a quarter teaspoon of salt for your dry ingredients. For your wet, you need eight ounces of crushed pineapple, three eggs that you'll beat separately and then put them in there, one cup of oil, and then one cup of chopped pecans, and I chop mine up real, real, real tiny, okay? You'll need one and a half teaspoons of vanilla, and you need two mashed bananas, all right? So, the first thing that I do when I get ready to make this is it, it goes in a 9 by 13 inch pan. So, I like to grease and flour my pan so the cake will come out easy when you're ready to eat it. So, I just take a napkin or a paper towel and I rub it all on the bottom with a shortener like this and up the sides. And a little dab will do you. You don't need an excessive amount of shortening to do this. Just like that. Don't leave a bunch of white short, shortening showing. You wanna make sure you wipe it all down. Then you just take a little bit of flour. <clears throat> you can use nonstick spray, but it it's just better for cakes if you ask me. If you do it the old way, with shortening some flour, you could use butter, but to me, shortening is easier. It's because it's, you know, it goes further. Shake it all around, coating your whole bottom and your sides. So you just pat and shake, pat and shake. And then shake it all around. Sometimes I'm getting all the sides. Of it. Just like this. Four sides. Really good. And then when you're done, there will be a little bit of excess. If you want a light coating, take it and dump it out. Whatever's left. Done. Voila. Okay. Now, the recipe says you need to sift your flour. So today I am going to use my stand mixer, but I've got my soda and cinnamon in here already, and it's one teaspoon of each. So I just put a little bit in one of these wire sifters. If you got the regular kind of sifter, you can use that. It's fine. To me, this is just easier than cranking on a sifter handle. Here goes my salt. Oh. Now I need my sugar. And this cake um, takes powdered sugar icing. So, I mean, cream, cream cheese icing with powdered sugar. All right. We gotta have scoops in our sugar here because we, we make lots of sweet tea in Texas. So this is a half a cup measuring cup that I'm using because it'll fit down in my sugar thing. And I'm gonna do four of these, which equals the two cups. And this makes four half cups or 
total of two whole cups. So I'm just going to use a whisk. And I'm going to use my fresh farm eggs that my chickens laid for me. Pretty brown eggs. Those yolks are so rich. When you have brown eggs. Be beaten a lot just enough to mix them good because you want to make sure they they get beat up in there real good so now then let's see we need to add our pineapple it's eight ounces of crushed pineapple with the juice <clears throat> and we'll go ahead and mash our bananas So these are like two kind of large bananas, but you could do three medium or four small bananas if you wanted to. Just as long as you have a cup or a little over a cup. And the way I mash them is I do it in a cup or a fork. You can mash them however way you like to, but this is the way I've always done it. <clears throat> it's just easy to me. And if you ever have had a uh, southern hummingbird cake, you don't know what you're missing. It's moist and yummy. There's that one. We'll do our second one. Gotta get it. Just make sure you don't get that little thing down at the bottom you want to make sure you leave that little piece in there because you don't want that in your cake you don't eat that part's gross all right one cup using two pretty good sized bananas. So I'm going to teaspoons of vanilla and that looks about right to me close enough if it's extra it just makes it taste even better all right my one cup of oil now we're gonna mix it all up so start out kind of slow so your stuff don't fling out everywhere we need to speed it up a little. Alright, 
that is done. Now, get all that excess off of there. You that good stuff in your cake, not on the beer. And remember, you don't lick raw beer that has raw batter that has raw eggs in it. Because it might be sick. yourself she didn't preheat her oven I didn't preheat my oven today because I'm going to use my air fry oven my convection oven so all you do is turn it on to 350 on the bake take this oven maybe 30 seconds to heat up it's fast it don't take long it's real quick and as soon as it beeps we'll be ready to put our hummingbird cake in it now you just put it into your prepared pan with the shortening and flour and you can bake this cake in a, in a glass pan if you want to, but you need to make sure that it's a kind of a deeper one. You don't want too shallow of a pan for this cake. So that's why I'm making it in an old classic nine by 13 metal pan. And then just shake it to make sure it's in there even. And our oven is heated already. So for this one, I just put it in there long ways. Just like that. Boom. And my timer's already going, so when it goes off, I'll check it with a toothpick inserted in the center to see if it comes out clean. And if it's not ready, then I'll set it for like five more minutes and just check it at five minute intervals until it's ready to come out. All right, our hummingbird cake is ready. It ended up, I left it in there probably about 35 minutes um, until the toothpick inserted in the center was clean. And so it's all done and it's cooled down. So now we're gonna make our cream cheese frosting to go on it. So you need eight ounces of cream cheese, softened at room temperature for a while until it gets soft. And you need one stick of butter, which is half of a cup. And you need to let it soften at room temperature also. <clears throat> oh, and I need a little bit of milk. So, milk out. Cream your um, cream cheese and your butter together. <laughs> sugar is a 32 ounce bag so it's a two pound bag but this recipe calls for 16 ounces of powdered sugar which is one of those boxes of powdered sugar so I'm going to take and put about half 
of this powdered sugar in here. And save the other half for another day. I got exactly as much as I need. Oh, and you need a teaspoon of vanilla. And then we'll need just a little bit of milk to moisten it. And I start out with just a tiny, tiny bit. And then I can add more if I need to. <clears throat> And I just add the milk a tiny bit at a time. It probably ends up only needing about two or three tablespoons worth. If you get too much, your frosting will be runny. You don't want runny frosting. Unless you're making a glaze for like pound cake. your glass jar of vanilla. All right, <clears throat> and just spread it all over the top. Nice and evenly. Like so. Cream cheese frosting, so good. When I took my cake out of the oven, I put it on one of these wire racks to let it cool so the bottom could get cool. So that's why it's on there. I haven't taken it off of there yet. All right. <clears throat> Our cake is done. So now, I'm going to cut a slice and see what we think. Our cake. The cinnamon that's in there makes it have that color. 
one. All right, let's taste it. Mm. Perfect. If you like my video, make a homemade Southern hummingbird cake. Please like it, share it to others, and subscribe to my channel. We'll see y'all next time in Nini's Texas Kitchen.